I'm Larry Fedorik. This is I Was Eight, my weekly podcast, a storytelling journey about growing up in a small town. This is not fiction. These stories happened, mostly as told. By the way, if you're listening on a strictly audio platform, let me remind you that I Was Eight also has a YouTube channel for your convenience. Might make it easier to share the podcast with friends. Now, let's get on with this week's episode. And by the way, it's got nothing to do with golf. Chapter 5. The Green Jacket When you take stock of your childhood possessions, stuff you had as a kid, maybe even a few things you wish you still had, does anyone remember clothing? Maybe your first suit or fancy dress... I remember some uncomfortable church shoes, but generally speaking, items of clothing are not among your cherished memories. Maybe as you get older, but not from when you were eight. I remember toys mostly, and then usually cars. I loved cars. If I was in line for a new toy, it had to be a car. I had some trucks too. Tonka toys, dinky cars, matchbox, some generic ones, plastic, metal, whatever, didn't matter. The thing I remember is that they were all different sizes, but yet they all played together. Isn't that some kind of life lesson? No, you're right, probably not. But on any given day, I could get into my matchbox Chevrolet drive to my job at the construction site, and operate the huge Tonka excavator. A digger, we called it. Size or scale didn't matter. Imaginary Larry could fit in anywhere. Imaginary Larry expanded and contracted as the vehicle size dictated. So, let's see, taking stock, uh, the toy cars and trucks. I also had uh, a hockey set, Monopoly game, checkers, ball glove, decent marble collection, comic books, mad magazines, some toy guns, a wagon, a bike. Oh, yeah, the toboggan. That was a Christmas thing. Dear Santa, want a toboggan, your friend Larry. Dear Santa, about that toboggan, should have said need. Yeah, need a toboggan. Dear Santa, remember my toboggan letter? How's that going? Two or three letters a day. Started around Remembrance Day and right through the month of December. Dear Santa, drew a picture of the toboggan. Hope it helps. Did you mail those letters, Dad? Letters. Yeah, yeah, mailed them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just wondering, because I'm hearing nothing. Well, Christmas arrived and Santa came through with the toboggan, but... Geez, you know, could have written back at least once, just saying. Yet, with all that stuff, some of my favorite toys were a stick. Every kid found and kept a good stick. A large cardboard box from when we had a new stove delivered. Oh, that was a great fort for months. And uh, also some rocks that I kept in a small pail. My Uncle Paul took me out rock collecting one day and taught me the difference between granite and shale and... Well, okay, that's all I remember. But yeah, I had a pail of rocks. Mom, I'm bored. Why don't you play with your pail of rocks? Great. Oh, and remember, I had that tent for a while, so... Gee, now that I look back on it, I was spoiled rotten. The point of all this is that when you look back at what you had as a child, you mostly remember the toys, maybe a pail of rocks. No one really remembers the clothes from when you were eight. Oh, sure, you may look at a grade school pic and remember that sweater, but it's not among the evocative recollections, is it? Yeah, for me, it was never about the clothes. It was about the toys. Until... The Green Jacket came along. The Green Jacket changed my life. 
Or perhaps at eight I was ready for a change, and the green jacket was simply the impetus I was looking for. Who knows? The green jacket came into my life from an unlikely source. Dad. In the day, in my family, Dad had absolutely nothing to do with clothing the boy. Dad didn't take me clothes shopping, paid no attention to how I was dressed for school. He didn't even care if I took my cap off while eating lunch. Clothing was mom's jurisdiction. She took me shopping. She told me to tuck in my shirt. She even taught me how to tie my tie for church. Well, actually, she taught me how to clip on my clip-on tie, which I then wore to church. Kind of ironic, don't you think? You're in a place of worship talking to God, and your tie is a lie. I'm not an actual tie. I'm here under false pretense. Please don't judge me. Yeah, mom was about the clothes. Well, it was also my grandparents' job to get me new socks and pajamas at Christmas and birthdays. Just what I wanted, I was taught to say. Anyway, back to the point. Dad not connected to Larry clothing in any way, shape, or form. So, Dad buys me a jacket? Wow. The green jacket also came at an unlikely time. Out of the blue. No special occasion. Wasn't coming on winter. I hadn't grown out of my other jacket. None of that. Just one day, Dad comes home and he's got a new jacket for Larry. I'm trying to remember. Maybe he was in trouble with Mom, and buying me a jacket was his way of getting an ally for the ensuing debates. As I recall, both Dad and I had a curfew. Different ones, but, you know, a curfew. And either one of us could be grounded in an instant for disobedience. In all the years he was alive, I never thought to ask Dad about the green jacket. There's all kinds of things you wished you had said to your parents, and for me, this is one of them. What was the deal when you bought me that jacket? Where did you get it? Why did you get it? I can't see Dad walking through the Kresge's or the Woolworth's shopping for a jacket for me. Even if he saw it in a store window... I don't think he'd say, my, what a nice jacket. That would be perfect for my son, Larry. It is Larry, isn't it? I I'm kidding. He was great. But, I mean, he just wouldn't get me a jacket. But he did. My best theory is that he won it in a poker game. Now, you say, what kind of man would bet his kid's jacket in a poker game? Well, you didn't know my dad's friends. I met a few of them, and trust me, the theory holds. Either he won the jacket, or something else like a car, and the jacket was simply inside the car. I'll raise you my car and all of its contents. Call, read him, and weep. Full house, loser. You know, a legendary tale in our family was that we once owned a beautiful, like-new house trailer, a wonderful mobile vacation home that slept for, had a kitchen and everything. We owned it for about two and a half hours, one time in the middle of the night. Dad had won it in a poker game and was scheduled to pick it up the next day as soon as he figured out a trailer hitch arrangement. As the story goes, filled with the euphoric sense of incredible luck and good fortune, he found another poker game on the way home and decided to parlay the substantial winnings into something even bigger. And as you've guessed, two pair was not good enough. And he lost our house trailer and then some. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Except uh, that song didn't exist back then, so Dad had nowhere to turn for gambling advice. 
Yeah, that was the legend. I never asked Dad about that either. I'd never seen anything like this green jacket before, except maybe on TV or the movies. It was, of course, green, uh, bomber-style leather with cloth around the collar and the cuffs. Except probably not leather, because Dad said it's waterproof. In my view, it was both leather and waterproof. After all, aren't cows waterproof? Although I don't recall the words genuine cowhide appearing anywhere on or inside the green jacket. Speaking of inside, it had an inside pocket. How cool is that? An inside pocket. My first. I could put something in there. And no one would know I was carrying anything at all. Beauty. The green jacket was nice and thick, almost good enough for winter. It was a tad too large. Mom said I could wear a thick sweater under it until I grew into it. Grow into it? Huh. How does that work? I'd never grown into anything before. I'd grown out of stuff, a lot of stuff. But growing in? Okay, I'll give it a shot. One thing this meant for sure, I'd have this amazing jacket for a good long time. So as I said, the green jacket changed my life. How? Well, firstly, I look damn good in that green jacket. I look more important. Felt like it, too. I definitely look bigger, tougher for sure, yeah. Kids would say, wow, where'd you get that jacket? Fewer high school kids picked on me and made fewer disparaging remarks. Why? Well, I just said I was bigger, tougher, possibly now one of the cool kids. And they didn't even know about the inside pocket. That was my secret. They had no idea about it or what I might be packing in there. Most often just a roll of butterscotch lifesavers, but hey, they didn't know. And there was no other jacket like it in town. Possibly the world. We had a series of hooks on the wall near the back door. That's where our jackets and coats went, but not the green jacket. The green jacket got a proper hanger and stayed in my closet in my room. I left the closet door open so I could look at it as I was falling asleep. I also found myself praying for rain. Let's see how waterproof this thing really is. When it rains and all the other kids are stuck inside, I'll be the only lucky one out jumping in puddles, bone dry in the coolest jacket. And my lifesavers will stay dry in the inside pocket. I got my chance one day while being babysat on my grandparents' farm. The sky opened up, and I told my grandfather I had to go outside. I zipped up the jacket, put on the big rubber boots, and ran out. The jacket wasn't army green, but close enough. I was Corporal Larry Fedoric, on guard duty. I marched the path back and forth between my grandparents' cottage and the old outhouse. That was my guardhouse and I patrolled carrying my rifle stick, uh, kept a sharp eye out for Nazis. During my tour of duty, not one attack. Good job, soldier. I remember my grandfather every few minutes opening the door and telling me to come in out of the rain. No, not yet, I'd yell. He would just shake his head, face palm, and close the door. When I was relieved of sentry duty, my head and jeans were soaked, but the miracle green jacket kept the rest of me dry. Rations were a cookie and some warm tea with milk. The green jacket and I had a couple of good years together. At one point, I thought I might have it forever. Alas, as I got older, another growth spurt happened, and I just couldn't fit into it anymore. Against my wishes, it was decided that the green jacket would go to my little cousin Freddy, who needed a jacket. 
and although he was too small for it, they felt that he would grow into it. About a year passed before I saw it again. We were visiting my uncle's farm and Freddy was wearing the jacket. My green jacket. It looked older and worn. The cuffs were ragged. And Freddy had let the jacket get dirty. I remember thinking, hey, we'd been through war together. And even then, I never let the green jacket fall into a state of disrepair like frickin' Freddy. I wanted to say to my jacket, hey, it wasn't my idea for you to go live with Freddy. If it was up to me, we'd still be together. I didn't say anything to the green jacket. And I regret that. But that's life, right? Stuff you wished you had asked your father and stuff you wished you had said to your jacket? I Was Eight is a weekly series written, produced, and voiced by Larry Fedoric. A new episode every Thursday. Share your stories with Larry, or if you like, share Larry's stories with a friend. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Larry Fedoric, that's F-E-D-O-R-U-K, can be reached at LarryFedoric37 at gmail.com. 